This one is going to rouse the blood, I hope. And uh, if, it's, if, if it doesn't, it's because you're not helping. Okay, so you got to help. It's called The Very Last Day. So you've got a good gospel song here. And uh, here, Dustman's. Okay, let's see how this Everybody gonna pray on the very last day when they hear that bell ring the world away. Everybody gonna pray to the heavens on the judgment day. Well, you can sing about your great King Day, but you can preach about the wisdom of song. But the judgment falls on all mankind when the trumpet sounds a call. All equal and the same. Away the Lord, he calls your name. Get ready, brother, for that day. Everybody gonna pray on the very last day. When they hear that bell ring the world away. Everybody gonna pray to the heavens on the judgment day. Well, one day soon no man will stand. His word will be heeded in all the land. Men shall know and men shall see. We all are brothers and we all are free. Mankind was made in clay. Each of us in the very same way. Get ready, brother, for that day. Everybody gonna pray on the very last day. Oh, when they hear that bell ring the world away. Everybody gonna pray to the heavens on the judgment day. Well, the law is given and the law is known. The tale is told and the seed is sown. From dust we came and to dust we'll go. You know that the Lord, he once told us so. All the earth and the the Lord's command. Get ready, brother, for that day. Everybody gonna pray. On the very last day, oh, when they hear that bell ring the world away, everybody gonna pray to the heavens on the judgment day. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, I'm thinking I say that one. Okay. I'll just start ribbon flipping out there. Oh, okay. We'd like to thank you, Dust, for joining us here on stage. You may now be excused. Okay. <laughs> He's excused. The, the instrument Dusty's playing is a long neck Pete Seeger style five string, and uh, it's traditionally equipped. If you'll notice on the third fret, there's a plastic or elastic capo. And the only man that ever played that open that I ever saw on a picture was Pete Seeger. Everybody else, if you look at the Kingston Trio, everybody else, they had to have that style banjo, but they always capered on the third fret, which essentially turns it back to a normal banjo. And what does it say on the front? It says, this, this? machine <laughs> surrounds Tate and forces it to surrender. This machine <laughs> surrounds hate and forces it to surrender. Go Pete. Go. That's this is the song that Dusty or that Bert and Tim heard Karen sing at uh, North Thurston High School. It was a hoot nanny, and they must have been playing there too. We figure, but we don't remember exactly. I peeked in to say. Dawn was breaking 
Mike. Yes. We give the stage back to you oh. reluctantly. But right. there you go. Let's welcome Pat home. Without which she and Pete and Bonnie and Bob, this uh, would have never happened. Pat. Wow, thank you all for coming. And I've got to thank John Dodge for putting in the paper and reminding people today. And we have Bob Gillis, who is another founder of the Null Set. We have four people. Oh, you can stand up, maybe. Bob. Artist extraordinaire. I might write about, about uh, his uh, showing the photos on Bonnie's nude body in his house. And that was quite exciting. That's in the book. And I, I might not read that part. And then we have Lois Bergeson here, and she might be our oldest member here. If anybody's older than 95, please shout out. But this is Lois. Please stand up and... She was an early Nelset uh, supporter, and she actually had her daughter's 16th birthday there. And she told me the story this morning that they, uh, one parent called and said, well, I'm not sure that's a good place for, for girls. You know? And uh, she said, well, that's fine, let her stay home. We're having the party there. <laughs> and then my writing instructor, Keith, is here someplace. Oh, right over there, okay. And he's not responsible for the bad writing, only the good writing. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna read you a little part about the Selma March in uh, Alabama, because there's a movie out right now that you're probably all aware of that is about the march in Selma. And we sent a person from the fellowship, uh, we had the fellow Unitarian Fellowship, and Allison Matthews went to that march. And I just, I recount it in the book. And this was before I knew they were making a movie of, you know, uh, the thing. So <clears throat> political groups were using the null set as a meeting place weeknights, much like traditions does today. The uh, Unitarian board was meeting one evening at the null set and Allison Matthews, a tall blonde woman who lived on Eld Inlet and swam there every day came to that meeting determined to get Unitarian support to go to Selma, Alabama. She told them, James Reed, a Unitarian minister from Boston, has been beaten to death in Selma. I feel we must do something to acknowledge his death and the death of that young black man who was shot on Bloody Sunday. Pete was at the same meeting, my ex-husband, who isn't here today because he died in 2010. But I wish he was here, he would just love this. He was a great musician, and he backed up so many people on the Washington Bays. Pete was at the same meeting and totally agreed. Pat and I have talked a lot about this. We can't allow the South to continue beating and hanging people who just want to register to vote. Allison stated clearly, I'm willing to go to Selma on March 21st, but I need a group to support me. So Pete and the board were eager to help send Allison to Selma. Let's organize a group here in Olympia and hold a march the same day. We might get a picture on the front page of the Olympian, especially since you will be in Selma marching. And that was the beginning of the Thurston County Friends of the Mississippi Project, which continued to meet at the Null Set. Our family joined in the walking down Capitol Way on a cool, cool gray day in support of the Selma march. There weren't many people at our march, but our emotions were high and we were determined to make a difference. When Allison returned, we heard there were at least 8,000 other civil rights activists at this third march from Selma to Montgomery. And by the end of the march, they had 25,000. And so it just goes to show if we're, go, you know, the first one march was only 700 people. Then there were, uh, I think of 2,000 people and then 8,000 people all within like three weeks. It was amazing. She re uh, Allison came back and reported, the march started on Sunday. We traveled 12 miles a day in mud and rain, camping overnight in nearby fields. But this time we were protected by the National Guard and allowed to deliver our petition to Governor Wallace in Montgomery. 
We were successful. I'm so glad I went and that you supported me. And then the next thing that came out of the Mississippi Project was uh, later that year, Pete got a letter addressed to the Friends of the Mississippi Project asking us to sponsor a new show that they were touring. And it was called A Minstrel Show or Civil Rights in a Cracker Barrel. I was aware of the San Francisco Mime Troupe's work and knew this would be really good. And the Mime Troupe was asking radical groups like Students for the Democratic Society, SDS, and other civil rights groups of which we were members to sponsor the show and share the proceeds. The Mime Troupe's show combined civil rights and stopping the war in Vietnam. I took on the job of finding a place to perform, advertising, and housing the actors. Oddly enough, St. Martin's College Associated Student Body agreed to sponsor the show. I didn't tell them that it was a radical theater group. <laughs> Afterwards, I found out that they had assumed it was a real, old-fashioned menstrual show. <laughs> and the Daily Olympian said the students had checked out the San Francisco newspapers and that it had favorable reviews. The day after the show, the Daily Olympian's inch high, bold-faced headline read, black face gets a black eye degree, quote, censored, quote, disgusted. So halfway through the performance, the lights went out, the priests in their black gowns filed out, the lights came back on, and the cast of the mime troupe assembled on stage. The student body representatives announced to the audience they had stopped the play. The article in the Olympian stated the play was obscene and unchristian. Can you imagine? The caption under the picture of a white actor in an obvious black face read, it was a black night in the old Abbey Theater. <laughs> so the Unitarians who were there that night still remember it as being one of the most exciting political artistic events in Olympia. We enjoyed, in, we stayed in the auditorium and had a discussion with the actors, the director, the audience about free speech for about an hour afterwards or more. And the students themselves were not in agreement with the leaders who had turned out the lights. The crowd that stayed wanted to see the rest of the show, so the mime troupe offered free tickets to see the Seattle performance. They didn't shut down any other, uh, in any other town. It was just in Olympia. <clears throat> At least 10 actors from the San Francisco mime troupe stayed in our homes that night. Discussions went on into the night as people tried to understand what had happened and why. I first noticed the priests beginning to shuffle out of the theater, their skirts rustling when I saw the actors miming a scene of masturbation. <laughs> and not literal, not literally, but obviously that. And then Bob, Bob remembers a scene of a black man having sex with a white woman. I'm sure the priests did not like that. At the end of the first act, the actors bared the palms of their hands to show which ones were black and which ones were white. The paper quartered Jerry uh, Gray, the administrative assistant to the president of the college. He said he and his wife had hoped to be entertained, but were disgusted and disturbed by the violations of good taste. <laughs> but was it in good taste to attend a performance of a racist minstrel show when people were marching in the streets to gain their civil rights. Did that make sense? The play also included a vivid scene of Vietnamese peasants in their wide straw hats falling down like dominoes, a reference to the theory that all small countries next to Vietnam would fall like dominoes in the quote, communist peril if we didn't win this war. And so I've tried to put quite a, bit, a little bit of history throughout the but there's also some salacious stuff too. Because it, it was the time that everything was sort of wide open and it's been so much talking to the people I did interviews with because I learned even more about what went on back then that I didn't know about. So anyway, thank you very much for coming. And uh, Thank you, Pat. Upcoming is the mud cat himself, Mr. Dan McKinstry. So this is a treat for our Olympia ears for sure.
up with someone. Pain in my head. Ooh, crawl right back in bed. Nothing in the morning make you feel so bad. Lonesome blues make you feel so sad. I got your money. Feel so bad. Talking about your blues, it's the worst you ever had. Been in love. I used to fly high like a turtle dove. I had your blues most many a time. It's just a woman on a poor boy's mind. I got you morning blue. I feel so bad. Talk about your blues, it's the worst I ever had. One of the big attractions of the no set back in uh, 65, apparently, was uh, PH Factor Jug Band, which was at that time, I would say, not only the best jug band between Seattle and Portland, but far surpassed, for instance, the, the Dirt Band and the Question Bands, which were very, very good bands. And they also, uh, oh, John said when they were making uh, Paint Your Wagon movie, anybody remember the Paint Your Wagon four-hour epic musical? Uh, John's band, the PH Factor, backed up the dirt band for that mud scene in the, in the movie to where the town fell apart and the gold rose to the bottom or whatever happened there, you know. And this is a, let's see, this was one of John's favorite songs. Candy man, better and gone. 
They tell you, man, he's better and gone. Tell you, man, oh, better and gone, huh? I love my candy gal. Lord knows I do. There's a little red light, a little green light. There's a little red light, a little green light. On the red, go on the green. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. Hey, Candy Man. Oh, Benny and Gone. Hey, Candy Man. He's better and gone. Candy Man. Oh, Benny and Gone. I love my candy gal. Lord knows I do. Yeah, you run to the corner. Run to the corner, get the baby some beer. Run to the corner, get the baby some beer. Look at here. Run to the corner, get the baby some beer. Run to the corner, get the baby some beer. I love my candy gal. Lord knows I do. Oh, oh. Lord knows I do. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Gary Davis wrote that. Isn't that just about right? <laughs> There's another Reverend Gary. He was a, a big influence on everybody down here through Jerry Murray and, and uh, John Brown and Hendrix and people that saw him play up in, in B.C. I don't know what the politics were, but he was up there and seldom played down stateside here. And uh, after Gary becomes saved, he wrote this. You may be high, you may be low, you may be rich, you may be poor, when the Lord is ready, you got to move. You may be old, you may be young, you may be weak, you may be strong, when the Lord gets ready, you got to move, 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 when the Lord gets ready. I'm down here on my bended knee. Ask the Lord above, have mercy, please. When the Lord gets ready, you got to move. Hey, you can run, you will be caught, and you can hide. You will be found when the Lord gets ready. You got to move. You got to move. You got to move. Ooh, you got to move. When the Lord gets ready. You got to move. When the Lord gets ready, you got to move. Thank you. I understand we're going to take a short break now and, uh, and prepare ourselves for a real treat. Now, I, I knew the pH factor pretty well. And the best singer they ever had is right over here. This is John Brown Jr. He's up next. Thank you. From the old days, Kay and Dusty Rhodes. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. You gotta be sure not okay. to tell Annie. <laughs> yes. All right.
All right. Let's see if this is mic. I'm really not Kay Rhodes, but... Um, she's keeping her hat on because she was blonde in the first set, now she's a brunette. That's right. It's, it's really white, but of course, we all know that. Uh, now, I am not playing here in front of an audience. <laughs> Dusty and I are back in the pantry, which doubles as a green room here. And we did a great run through, and Dusty gave me thumbs up, which is what I need to recreate. So, vanish. All right? I'm going to my special place. Uh -huh. Yeah. Special place. Dusty. Yeah, the pantry. Um, oh, we're, uh, we're getting on the edge of feedback here. Who's <clears throat> feeding back, Dusty? Well, uh, while they're fixing the sound, I'll, I'll, I'll have to uh, just give a, a brief history. Uh, Kay and I, well, after I graduated from Gonzaga University, and uh, I had a trio there that we went down and spent uh, summer in San Francisco area, Bay Area, playing and singing, including The Hungry Eye, which I think I mentioned in the thing there. And then uh, Uncle Sugar decided that uh, they didn't uh, want to let me uh, wait out uh, my uh, ROTC commission. So I got called to active duty, went to Fort Benning, Georgia, and then got reassigned up here to Fort Lewis. They didn't have any room for a second lieutenant and his wife. Uh, so we got a place here in town. And, and then we heard about the, uh, the null set. Uh, we came here right after Kennedy was assassinated in 63. And then uh, as soon as we heard about the null set, even though I was a commissioned officer in the Army, <clears throat> I had been playing this music and I wasn't about to stop. So anyway, that's what we did. And we patterned ourselves after uh, Kingston Trio and, and uh, Limelighters and, and uh, 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 Joan Baez and those folks. So here's a couple of Kingston Trio tunes that were kind of our signature uh, songs. The fire's Joe, and they call the wind Mariah. Mariah blows the stars around, sets the clouds a flying. Mariah makes the mountain sound like folks was out there dying. Mariah, 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 they call. And the sun was always shining But then one day I left my gal I left her far behind me And now I'm lost, so God I'm lost Not even God can find me Mariah, Mariah, Mariah They call There ain't no name for lonely Well, I'm a lost and lonely man Without a star to guide me Mariah, blow my love to me I need my girl beside me Mariah, Mariah, Mariah They call
the other tunes that are songs actually that uh, Kingston Trio made popular on their first album that uh, I fell in love with when I was a freshman at Gonzaga um, was Fast Freight. And so uh, we're going to try and do a version of Fast Freight. As I listen for the whistle and lie awake and wait, wish the railroad didn't run so near. Cause the rattle and the clatter of that old fast freight keeps a making music in my ear. Go bomb again. Go bomb again. Go bomb again. Hear the whistle blow. everything uh, that you know I, I have to wear hearing aids now because of my uh, my time in service anybody uh, identify with that yeah um, so anyway I, uh, I have a, another song I'd like to do actually two songs the, uh, the next one is um, uh, one that um, was uh, written by John Hartford and I think is really appropriate for this uh, uh, this event, um, and uh, I, I got a, a wonderful chance to meet John Hartford the year before he died when he was up at uh, uh, Fiddle Tunes at Port Townsend a few years back. And uh, he was just, uh, I, a lot of you may not, may not remember John Hartford, but he was a banjo player and uh, later on fiddle player who, who uh, wrote and played a lot of music with Glenn Campbell. And he even had his own TV show for a while, the John Hartford Show. Uh, wrote a lot of really powerful songs. But this one, I think, uh, is most appropriate here. And it's all about how, you know, the random events in your life often have more to do with how your wife, life turns out. Even how your wife turns out, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> so so this is called, I would not be here if I hadn't been there. <laughs> I 
I would not be here if I hadn't been there And I wouldn't been there if I hadn't just turned On Wednesday the 3rd in the late afternoon Got to talking with George who works out in the back and only because he was getting off early to go see a man at a Baker Street bookstore with a rare first edition of Steamboats and Cotton, a book he would never have sought in the first place had he not been inspired by a fifth grade replacement school teacher in Kirkwood who was picked just at random by some man on the school board who couldn't care less and she wouldn't been working if not for her husband who moved two months prior to work in the office of a man he had met while he served in the army and only because they were in the same barracks an accident caused by a poorly made roster mixed up on the desk a sergeant from Denver who wouldn't be in but for being in back in a car he was riding before he enlisted that hit a cement truck and killed both his buddies but the back seat flew up there and spared him from dying and only because of the fault of a workman who forgot to turn screws on a lineup in Detroit cause he hollered at Sam who was hateful that morning hung over from drinking alone at a tavern because of a woman he wished he'd not married he met long ago at a Jewish bar mitzvah for the son of a man who had moved there from Jersey who managed the drugstore that sold the prescription the cure of the illness he caught way last summer he would not have caught except for some kid all contagious with fever who sat in his lap was the son of a man who sold him insurance he met at a smoker way back there in college that's it <laughs> all right Okay, so uh, here we go. <laughs> Come gather round people at the Capitol Dome And demand that your leaders save this planet our home And we nothing less, yeah, we'll not stand alone If the earth to you is worth saving then you better start calling, go pick up the phone, for the climate on Earth is a changing. Come, coal, gas, and oil men, you poison the air and the land and the water as if you don't care for naught but your profits and more than your share. Well, your hour of reckoning's arriving. Your in-the-ground assets will have to stay there for the climate on Earth you've been changing. Come, come, kid, senators, congressmen, answer the call. If you do, don't pretend you don't know, don't deny and don't stall. For your failure to act could well do my soul. There's a typhoon outside and it's raging. You deflate your basements and leap up your walls. For the climate on Earth is a changing. Come mothers and fathers throughout the land. If you don't step up now, your kids won't understand How will they forgive you if you don't lend a hand? If the planet for them is worth saving Then get off of your assets, pull your heads from the sand For the climate on Earth is a changing Indigenous peoples from both far and near 
Street Trek, the despoilers of our biosphere. For the seventh generation, too soon we'll be here. Their future is ours for the saving, so that when they are born, they will not live in fear of a climate on Earth that's a change. Yes, when they are born, they must not live in fear of a climate on Earth that's a change. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> It's uh, my pleasure to introduce a legend. <laughs> I'm not much to look at. John Brown. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. I've been driving from Portland until a few seconds ago. Just, who's, hot, who's hot here? Are you hot? Are you hot? Say what? I'll put it over here. There. Maybe that would You hear that? Okay, he's right, it is it. It's a hot one. Maybe I'll uh, I'll take off my purse too. I <laughs> We always say bad things about women, but you know, I wear my purse. It's double extra duty, but it's got everything in there that I need, you know. My camera is in there, phone is in there, vitamins, can, uh, what else is in there? Uh, cough drops, earplugs, uh, my ACLU a copy of the Constitution that they sent me in the mail, which I am proud to have. Find useful if you get stuck, you need a little reading material, just go back and review that sucker. There's some things in there, there's some stuff there. Is it, is it the boy? Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's the big one. don't wake up as fast as they used to. And, uh... So I think I'll just play a, 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 a real simple blues song first. I think that one is... Hi. Hello. No, that's not, that's not it. Oh, I'm astonished. There's, actually be in the same room with Gretchen that they, you know, when I was a junior in high school, she had hit songs on the radio. It was like, they're from Washington, just like me. And they were uh, like sacred local icons, like the Whalers. And the other most dead. Call for the doctor. 
Shakes just Marat and said I could fix him. But the drugs is in a warehouse in Caracas. Yano mammy, little baby. Never seen a toaster. Yano mammy, little baby. Never rode no train. Now Yano mammy's little baby. Love my psychedelic posters. Yano mammy's little baby. Love the party when it rains. They party when it rains. Yeah, way down south, even south of Alabama, there's a bunch of friendly people call themselves the Yano Mammy. Living in the jungle, Venezuela or Brazil, now these is people love to pongo, but they all been taking me on. Now Yano Mammy's little baby. Eating termite larvae, Yano Mammy's little baby. Eating monkey brain. Yano Mammy's little baby. Go fishing when they're hungry. Yeah, no man, little babies love to party when it rains. They party when it rains. Yes, they do. Someone's drilling oil down in Yanomami County. Now, someone found an emerald. My, wasn't that a bounty? Yeah. They're panning gold in the Yanomami River. Sudden, all the Yanomamis coming down with swollen livers. Yanomamis, little baby. They never seen a graveyard. Yanomamis, little baby, they don't bury no dead. And all they reduces them to ashes. Add a little water, they stir them up and pass them round, and they just drink them down instead. Yes, Yano Mammy's little baby, still eating termite larvae. Yano Mammy, do enjoy their monkey brain. Yano Mammy, little baby, they go swimming when it's sunny. Yano Mammy's little baby, love to party when it rains. They party when it rains. Yes, they do. Party on. Party on, Yano Mammy. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I do like to be, you know, I love absurd things. You know, like... Global warming is a hoax, do da do da. Just one of those liberal jokes, oh do da do. -da. <laughs> okay, here's a song that I, I wrote for my I wrote for one of my daughters when she was little and then had a, a doll that went with this. So some of this stuff is dated, you know. She's 42 now, I think. <laughs> So my heart up in a sack of sand And I'll make love with my sweet little raggedy Ann. Though your eyes don't roll in your head when you recline, we could stay awake all night. You know, I don't mind. When I'm stuck to the hair, the gum in your hair of sunrise red. 
Now we lie in a heap that the kids pushed under the bed. We could dance, romance to the dreams nobody planned. And I'd be right by the side of my wide eyed, raggedy man. You know, you had something that all the puppets lacked. And poor China Dolly's head was cracked. So when I saw you there, so round and firmly packed, though the Barbie doll was really stacked, and she had skin that artificially tanned. Hey, every thread in my heart and head cried raggedy in. about red-headed women. I'm looking around for some place this plain good land. I think I see a, well, it looks like, it looks like Raggedy Ann. Hmm. I get my nose down close to the ground, as only a pilot can. And sniff your heart out like the hound of love I am. Oh, you know it, baby. When I see you doubled in the middle and stuffed underneath the couch, with your smile so on, you could not even holler out. Well, I run to you just as fast as these cotton legs can. I'll be your raggedy handy, handy, candy man. Yes, I will. And the world will know I love you, raggedy hand. My raggedy. up. I, I landed on my L. I actually had a three-point landing about four years ago. I stopped a full-size pickup truck with my stomach, and that was, it was a learning experience. <laughs> I don't recommend it. I landed on my heel and my elbow and the back of my head, about 20 feet over there, and uh, I'd been cutting a, cha a chainsawing a log out of the road. It was a big storm, and, and uh, it was right after Thanksgiving four years ago. And uh, I, at least I had the presence of mind when I realized the truck was like imminent, you know, five feet away and going 45 miles an hour, that I pulled the saw up out of the cut that I had. I almost had finished. It was really a bummer, you know. Another 30 seconds, and I'd have had that thing cut through and out of the way. But. He didn't see me, he didn't see the tree. The tree was pretty big. So uh, the upshot is that the places that my little finger and some of these other guys too, used to go automatically, you know. I kind of do play like that. I have, it's an evolutionary thing. I think I, my hands do the playing and I just listen and decide whether or not I like it. So. Uh, I come second. It's the hands come first. And they don't, they're, they're learning to go into the place, especially this one is learning to go back to the places where it used to go. And I am grateful. And, and uh, sometimes, well, I'm not proud really. But I, I'm pretty tickled though that this incredible surgeon lady in Tacoma that put the bones back together in. The, the bottom of that ulna, put 12 little tiny screws in the chips and pulled it all together. And, and uh, when I went back to see her a month afterwards, she said, 
Here, look at this x-ray. See? See all these lines on the first x-ray? See how they're, they're almost gone here, which means your bone is actually growing back together. I'm not worthy. <laughs> Victoria, you did a wonderful thing. She did. If she knew the kind of songs that I sing, I don't know if she'd... <laughs> I don't know if anybody remembers the Christic Institute. They did some stuff in the 80s and then they sued the government and it didn't work out and so anyway. But they were, they were, they were on the right track. And at the time, I, I wrote a song about it because uh, I was kind of on their side. I gotta remember what key I sing this in. I'll try G. Bought a farm down Costa Rica way. Borrowed money from the CIA. Masamino. Like everybody say, you know. That everything has a price. But all I've got to do to pay that loan Maintain an airstrip and a telephone Not much to ask to keep my happy home A home here in paradise Honkies in paradise Honkies in paradise Everything is working mighty nice for the honkies in paradise People say them agents got it made no. They're mostly overworked and underpaid They help this country build a foreign trade You know, everyone does their part Like me, I run each day till I damn near drop with the cows and the cashews and the coffee crop. Small time for mama and little curly top, but you know, they're always right here in my heart. Honkies in paradise, honkies in paradise. Everything is working mighty nice for the honkies in paradise. Now all these small brown brothers that you see They smile, they wave my way They laugh so free, you know There ain't nothing they wouldn't do for me well, I, re I reckon how we come this far Don't want much, a little country shack A garden plot, chickens round the back The stuff they got don't fill a coffee sack Sometimes I envy just how free they are. Honkies in paradise. Honkies in paradise. Everything is working mighty nice for the honkies in paradise. I sang this song at my 50th high school reunion in, in Richland. <laughs> About four years ago, and and afterward, after I before I finished the song, the woman who was running the program uh, <laughs> came walking up the aisle toward me, and I said, "Are you bringing the hook, Mr. Mac?" And she says, "Yes, I'm bringing the hook." <laughs> You're through. Thank you. One day this gringo hombre come to me Flash the rolly Yankee greenery And ask how much it would cost him to see Just what's going out on the plane I said, my friend, that there's the CIA 
We'll just walk down and have a look today. He climbed inside and I heard him gasp and say, well, I can see that they've been feeling no pain. Cause they had a pile of heroin. You could hide a wheelbarrow in. Cocaine enough to move all the marrowing Tribeca to the moon. Woo! Honkies in paradise. Honkies in paradise. Everything is working mighty nice for the honkies in paradise. Honkies in paradise. Honkies in paradise. Everything is working mighty nice for the honkies in paradise. Thank you. There's only seven other guitars here. Well, I was living on, on uh, I live on Bashan Island. I've been there quite a while. I have a little nursery there, but to, uh, to supplement my, my income, especially in the 90s when the the recycled price of cardboard was kind of, you know, through the roof. And so I was collecting cardboard on the island and taking it over to Tacoma to a recycler. And, uh, and it was, uh, you know, I'd have to wait in line for the ferry sometime. I had about 35 or 40 clients over the few years that I did that. And I'd end up with, you know, eight or 900 pounds of cardboard in the van and, you know, get it like $40 worth of, you know, cash money. You know, back when gas was only $2 and a quarter a gallon, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a little plywood three-quarter size guitar that I picked up at the Goodwill and I had it tuned to an open tuning because that was the only way I could play it. It was kind of warpo. Change over, so it worked pretty good that way. I'll let you put it back, Mike. <laughs> And I, and I had this song, you know, I finally came up with, the, you know, this little thing that kept running through my mind for, oh, ages, you know, just a little tune. And I'd sit there in the ferry line and play this thing. I did that for about four or five months before I finally had a words to go with it. And, and 
But they finally came. Hail Columbia, when you call back your gems from the ocean, snow melt water is the soul of your magical potion. Where the coho roll in the throes of their savage devotion, this could all change. Where did anyone get such a notion? Ancient giants, fir, cedar, and spruce, better useful than pretty. Cut them down, load them up to the sawmill at Oregon City. How the fish wheels turn night and day with no effort or labor. Feed your family, your garden, your dogs, cats, your pigs, and your neighbor. No white water where the bridge of the gods finally crumbled. Just a lake now where the song of Celilo once rumbled. Where the, where the nations dance, fish, play, and were joyful and humble. To dance. And the curse of a drunk in the dark, where he stumbled. In the springtime, in the turbans, your babies are twisted, chopped up so fine you can't even tell they existed. BPA says, "Well, it's too bad they can't find the ladder, but the power we make still the main thing that matters." Sweet Hanford, where your waters are poisoned and heated, sixty years now to make weapons we never have needed. And the trash left behind by this process we found so attractive. For the next ninety-nine thousand years, we'll be radioactive. Hey, Grand Coulee, tell me who was in charge of your planet? Can you tell me? That they knew what in hell they were damning. Who asked sturgeon, eel, whitefish, steelhead, and salmon? So the old ones still say today, flip the switch, kill a salmon. Flip the switch, turn a switch, kill a salmon. Thank you.
Made it through the forest field before us Nailed yourself a letter from the sun now all the causes seem intangible Cartoon smoke selling on the lawn And I want to break my hand on that wall of fog Over the land Extract and bring back Golden man At night when I'm wired from the light of my phone I look outside of nature's mess there's moths at the window just waiting for the glass to dissolve so that they can come in. And there's so many things that can impede all of our plans. We're still tied by bright skies.
for having me.
Thanks a lot. I'd like to do uh, action instrumental. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll do one song, and then we'll end the evening with uh, Bert leading us all in uh, May the Circle Be Unbroken, because that's what really 50 years ago, this is what we're doing. We're, we're keeping the circle going. Hey, this, this is uh, one, one of the great songs of all time, in my mind, Amazing Grace, and which is, of course, a, a song about redemption because it was written by a slaver. And he had this epiphany when he's, they're in a storm and his friend got blown over the side and uh, he said, you know, hey, wait a second. So he got religion and actually helped bring England uh, in what, 1805 or something to, ab to uh, abolish slavery in England. Thank you. 
Mr. Dave, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for coming. I think it's been a, a grand time. Oh, gee. Probably, probably. Key of G, and you all know the chorus. Circle be unbroken. The be un chorus. The circle be unbroken. The chorus. circle be unbroken by and by Lord by and by there's a better home awaiting in the sky Lord in the sky well I was standing by the graveside of a dear friend passed away when I heard that Preacher saying we'll be with him some sweet day. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? There's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Now all our brother and our sister. And the soul will never die. Will the serve? Come on, everybody, let's sing it out. Now. Broken so I like you better. Goodbye and bye. There's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Our earthly race here. we can let us gather in a circle take a sister by the hand will the circle be unbroken by and by lord by and by there's a better home awaiting in the sky lord in the sky the circle and be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by. There's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. In the sky. One more time. Will the circle be unbroken? Thank you.